Hey guys, Spectre here. Welcome back to some more Alone in the Dark. Um, well, I find out there's all kinds of things popping up. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for uh, six Heinrich. years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Ponchartrain. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know. They later produced sculptures that showed clear reference to ancient idols of the goddess. It's possible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it's interesting because of Deserto's history. Even the name Deserto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. How many fucking fertility goddesses have they got? In the case of naming the plantation Deserto, certainly not an accident. We know that Elijah Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult. For he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns. When the plantation was built outside, it certain registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Deserto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigarath. Um, as much as Deserto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely common among the learned Astarte. It's quite is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by warrior artists. Shub Nigarath is on the other hand a very uncommon, almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard of that name. The name is referred to only in rare books like... What the fuck is that word? Unas Pachelichin. Um, Colton and the Necronomicon. And it's believed to be a bastardization of the Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. A few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion. Resting in such qualities, Shumigrath cult was hard to get rid of, but it's believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Deserto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Deserto as malnourished and maniacal, as much as the army tried to save them. They fought back with fervour, as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte artists' colony remains a mystery, their recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice. That fertility goddess with a thousand names. There are some full-blown psychos in this fucking place. That one's now completed. 
Small pot parlor's got some here, so it's Lottie's room. Alright. I do. That is a good singer. We must have faith that Jeremy's pact with the Dark Man is a bluff. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is a goat without horns. She knows it and will play the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Mrs. Thompson. Okay. I don't know what the hell is going off in this room though, I can't find anything else in there. Still seen. Stuff to be done. We've got these rooms up here again. We know something happened downstairs in the cellar. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. For kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink. Tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? Wishing There's tree. There's something about tonight. Something that's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world what inside the out. And things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace, stay put for once. He's minding a child. It can't even mind your gravity and step right. First floor hall key. Mm. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. There's something missing. So I'm guessing there's a yeah, there's a puzzle in there with that stuff, okay.
Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long, but that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Ah. Is that so? That one's complete. Holy monkeys, the, uh, the, the, the psychopath. He's the guest in number three, the fucking psycho magician. No wonder he's receiving fucking therapy. Why does that so fucking surprise me? Think about 913. About what are these fucking Roman numbers? That's got to be 12, 11, 10. Yeah, it's got to be 9. So, have I got to go around with then? I've got to go around this way. What am I doing? I can't count on my dumbass. I don't get it. It just... What are you doing? McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Conby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. 
while Condi enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Greece. It was taunting him, like he was supposed to remember, but couldn't. Is it in that exact order though, or is it a different order because the order doesn't seem to be fucking working? It's not a thing, Shrey. I ain't doing shit. Selling that old barfly short. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. It's like a little hidden, is it? Sometimes I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dersetto, something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better, when in fact we are here to be forgotten. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. So I need a tool for that then, do I? Six. 
Isn't that his detective number? Yeah, but he's got these ones fingered out. this view. I know the combination. I carry it with me. One nine six. Or is it the ones that are crossed out? Six The empty room always felt familiar. It had a mild fragrance of crushed leaves and wet sand that somehow convinced visitors that they belonged. It wasn't real, of course, but it was more real than many other things you could find. One nine six. That is six nine two. But... I don't know. I have enough trouble with the one. I hate safes like this where you can't just like simply just fucking put the goddamn code in. Even says for this nine one. It worked. And this time it works. Is he kidding me? The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down because if I understand the condition sufficiently. It could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction. As some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new world view in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this world view, 
some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Okay. Well, what I will do is I'll open the other safe and we'll investigate his office in the next part. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, leave a like. If you're ready, please subscribe and I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Take care, everyone, and have a great day.